another stay home, stay creative. Today we're in my kitchen and we are going to make salt dough. It is a super cool material that you can make at home to sculpt things like clay using materials you probably already have in your kitchen. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to look at our ingredients. First, you guys need salt. Then you're going to need all purpose flour, any kind of work. Then you need water. And I have some measured out in here. Speaking of measuring cups, I'm gonna get out one cup measuring cup for my flour and a half cup measuring cup for my salt. Then we're gonna need a big bowl to mix it all up in. I got out a spatula to help me mix, but I might just end up using my hands. And then for when we're ready to bake, you're gonna wanna get out a baking sheet and some parchment paper if you have it. It can help it not stick, but you don't need it. Okay, so let's get started measuring. I'm going to rearrange my countertop and I'm going to start with salt. So I'm going to pour that open. I'm going to pour this into my half cup measuring cup. We're going to pour it all the way in here. That looks pretty good. Level that off. Pour it right into that cup. Now we can put that salt aside. And then we're going to get out our flour. And we're going to use our one cup measuring cup. And I'm going to Dig it into here, level that off. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then right into here. And we'll put that off to the side. Close up our flour, put that off. And then I'm gonna use this just to mix these two together to get them nice and mixed. It's kind of hard to tell because they look the same. They're both white, but we're gonna mix them all together. There we go, that's pretty good. And it helps to have a nice big bowl for this so it doesn't splash over the edges. So now that that's mixed, I'm gonna take my water and I have half a cup of water. So the same amount of salt I put in is how much water I'm gonna put in. And I am not gonna throw this all in at once. I'm gonna do it little by little. So I'm gonna add a little splash and then start mixing. And you're gonna see parts of it are gonna start to get hydrated but you still have a lot of loose flour and salt in there. So once it starts to seem like we've got it pretty well incorporated, I'm gonna add a little more. See how it's starting to come together a little bit more. We've got less and less of those loose pieces of flour and salt. Then I'm gonna add a little bit more. And at this point, I'm gonna switch from my spatula and I'm gonna kind of knock it off on the side, put it over here. And I'm gonna start coming in with my hands because this is the point we're gonna start kneading. So add in the rest of your water. There we go, so that's a half a cup. And I am gonna scrape these edges. And if you guys have ever worked with clay before, either in the X Studio or somewhere else, you are gonna remember what this feels like to knead and to wedge your clay. That is what we're doing with this. So we are gonna try to get all of this flour incorporated into our dough. So you can see how it's starting to come together. We started with all that loose flour and salt. Now we have dough. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna knead it. And you're gonna keep kneading this for up to 10 minutes. And that is just so it gets all well incorporated together. You can see, even as I go and I knead it more and more, it starts to come together. So different ways you can knead. I'm taking it and I'm folding it over itself and pressing down. So I end up with this pancake. I fold it in half and I press it down. Another way you can knead is by picking it up and just smushing it together in different ways. So you guys can have fun with this. You can do it in your bowl. You can take it and you can do it on your counter and press. That's how I like to do it. It's like wedging clay for me. So we're just gonna do that. And as I do this, you can see that it's starting to come together more and more. See how it's starting to look smooth versus before it was all feathery and it looked like it was about to fall apart. The more I knead it or wedge it, the more it's gonna come together and look like a solid dough. So I'm gonna keep kneading this for about 10 minutes and then once I'm done kneading, I am gonna leave it sit in here and I'm gonna cover it up with a towel. I'm gonna let it sit and rest for 20 minutes. 
and then we'll be back to start creating. Okay, we're back. It's been 20 minutes. Our dough's in here, but before we even get started and look at our dough, I am going to preheat my oven to 250 just so it's ready for us. So that's getting started over there. I put some parchment paper on my sheet tray so that's all ready for us. Now let's look at our dough. Okay, put our towel to the side. So our dough is looking nice and hydrated. It sat and it kind of firmed up. It looks good. See how we can kind of play with it almost like I would with clay. So let's get this bowl out of the way. And then we've got dough to work with. So what we can do with this is you can flatten it out with your hands or if you have one, you can get a rolling pin and roll it out. So this performs exactly like clay would if you would use if you've used clay before. So I'm just going to spread it out like this. And what I'm going to use is stuff that I have in my kitchen already. So I pulled out some of my cookie cutters so I can make shapes with it. So let's make I have this little dog shape can use one there. I have circle shapes, so we'll use some of those in just a second. I'm gonna roll this out a little bit more. You don't want it to be too thick. So I'm just gonna keep rolling that out. And you wanna make sure it's not sticking to your counter. It's pretty good. It won't be too sticky if it's sat the right amount of time. So I'm just gonna keep rolling. And you guys don't have to roll. You can also um, hand build with this. So you can also take a shape and smush it and sculpt with it. You can make things like this. You can shape with them. You don't have to roll, but that's what I like to do with this because it bakes the best. So we have it. It's probably, see that? It's about that thick. Not too thin because you don't want it to break, but not too thick that it won't cook all the way through. So why don't we do a dog right here? That's fun. And you guys can use whatever cookie cutters you have, but you also don't have to have cookie cutters at all. You can also just use your hand or you can use a knife. I have knives right here. So you can also freehand cut something out. It can be kind of just an abstract blob right here you can cut out or you can come over here and use some of your cookie cutters again so you are just going to keep doing that and then once they're cut out you're going to take them over and put them on your sheet tray i'm done making all my shapes rolling out my dough it's time for them to go in the oven again our oven's at 250 degrees fahrenheit and we're going to throw them in here for two hours So these guys were in the oven for two hours. I took them out, let them cool for a little bit on their sheet tray, and then moved them to this wire rack so that they could cool completely. You want them completely cooled to the touch before you start painting or decorating them. Of course, you can leave them plain like this. They turn out a pretty color, um, so you could leave them like this. You could write on them with a Sharpie, with paint, with markers. I chose to grab some of the paints I have at home and some of my brushes and just start painting them different colors. You can see that I also poked a hole in them, so I'm going to end up hanging them um, for a cool decoration. Um, but that is all I have for making salt dough with us for this Stay Home, Stay Creative. Um, good luck, and we can't wait to see what you make at home. Bye!